Evo nas, 11. jula 1995. godine u Srpskoj Srebrenici. U oči još jednog velikog praznika Srpskoga poklanjamo Srpskom je narodu ovaj grad i napokon došao je trenutak da se posle bune protiv Dahija Turcima osvetimo na ovom prostoru. Ja se ne sjećam kad sam pogođen, samo sam ležao i drhtao sam i boljela me desna strana, stomaka i ruka. Met se oko meni pogađalo u kamenje i ugledao kako ljudi padaju u drugim redovima. I kada su popunili taj red, onda su počeli sljedeći. Kada su bijeli te ljudi iza mene, tada me pogodilo u nogu. Tada me metak pogodio u nogu i imao sam užasne bolove, nisam smio da brisne, imao sam se samo ustegao jako i oni su nastavili sa ubijanjima i kad su završili sve, ja sam Boga molio da dođe da ubije mene, ali jednostavno nisam smio da ga zovem da me ubije. You know, after the Second World War, uh, the whole world said never, never, ever again. But that happened, happened in, in, at the heart of Europe. Your mind cannot grasp the fact that somebody would deliberately take another human being, execute them, and then hide their body, and then repeatedly attempt to hide their body. Srebrenica je bila jako lijep grad, mali grad, ali je bio pun života. To je bila jedna mala oaza, čak je mirisala, svaka je kuća imala svoju parasu, prepunu cvijeća. Po danas da sam ostala bez ikoga, bez oba dvoje djece, bez muža. Oprostite, suza mi je izdajica, nikad ne bi to uradila, ali suza... Mogu pričati o svemu, ali kad dođe do djece da pričamo o djece, zaista mi bude tada najtežnije. A naravno mojom malom sinu, kad smo se rastajali, on je svoje ruke stavio oko mene i molio me, idi mami, molim te kod umprofora, ti ćeš sustat, nećeš moći ići pre košume i pješke. Kad je došlo vrijeme da se rastanem, onda me odmah o sebe svojim rukama i rekao mi je, idi sam da ne vidim kud se otišla. Stavio je ruke na oči, svi su... Ali nije to moja djeca da su plakala, tada se mnoge porodice rastavile, nisu bili krivi, samo su bili krivi što se rodili u vjeroispovijesti islamskoj i što se tako zvali njiha ime ubila. U Domu kulture u Pilici, to je sve zvornička općina, isto bio mi je mlađi sin i tu znajući, to sam slušala jednog svjedoka kad je govorio da su se krili ispod pozornice i jadnici da se sakriju. To su bila djeca. The time that the, uh, the Srebrenica disaster took place, I think I was a young man in, in my mid-twenties. I probably didn't really understand the impact that I had on the people of Bosnia at the time. So when this opportunity came to come and see first-hand the impact it had on the local people, 
how people are still dealing with that, that travesty now. Um, I think it was an opportunity that just couldn't be turned down. So I'm really looking forward to learning more about what happened and seeing how the people are coping nowadays. nowadays. Um, what happened in Bosnia was covered on our news quite extensively. And I remember seeing horrific coverage of, of people under siege and, and living most intolerable lives. But I also remember feeling great shame because, like many people in the UK at the time, I shrugged my shoulders and I thought, what can I do to make a difference? I vividly remember the massacres in Bosnia because I was a young student. In fact, I had just graduated and I was in my graduate job at the time. Um, and I had recently got married and I had a very young baby, my first child, who's, who's now 20 years old in, in 1995. Uh, that was at the time of Srebrenica. So from 1992, I, I kind of remember all the atrocities and through the unfortunate circumstances that occurred in Bosnia, I actually managed to meet Bosnian refugees and I helped out with the refugees at that time. This was a slaughter. What happened in Srebrenica was a slaughter. Um, and the powerful footage that it showed of six boys who were in their teenage years um, to show that they they couldn't even put up a fight and the, the lack of humanity there was to, to watch them be killed the way that they were. It, it goes past religion, it goes past colour, it goes past language, it goes past all of that. It's intrinsically as humans we know what is right and we know intrinsically what is wrong. There is not a person on earth that can ever try and debate with me that that is right or that is justifiable, it's just simply not. In 1992, I feel emotional about it. Um, I can't imagine the fear that these people felt. Um, what struck me is how recent it was. Yeah. You know, these are things that happened well in our lifetime. Yes. I'm thinking, where was I when this was going on? Yes. For every single body that we've identified um, relevant to Srebrenica, we've had to do at least have at least seven different DNA matches because the bodies are so art disarticulated. In a normal case, we may just have one DNA match, for example, because the body is there. But we've basically had to reconstruct the body using a DNA match from a femur, using a DNA match from, from a tooth sample for, or from a skull sample to try to reassociate the body. I think you know, coming in and just seeing the bags to start with and thinking of the individuals and their families um, was the start of a, of a very short journey but when I was walking out and then you just look to your right you just see that these are stacks upon stacks that you're not here with 50 people or 100 people you're here with a thousand people you know a thousand people who are alive and are not.
My pledge is I'm a teacher and I'm going to educate the next generation about what has happened here in Bosnia and working in partnership with Remembering Srebrenica I will be bringing a student group out here later on this year. Before I came to Srebrenica I promised to do an event in Truro to remember the victims of this terrible genocide. I think now I'm much more able to do that because what I really want to do is focus on the stories of individuals and real people that other people can connect to. I think the enormity of it is so great that people might just be left cold. But by focusing on the mothers of Srebrenica, the children of Srebrenica, I think we might actually start to get the message across that we've got to stop genocide before it even happens.